we glorify God for bringing us together as the people of one house this afternoon Amen. I thank God for this wonderful privilege you know to stand before uh, people like you you know awesome people beautiful people handsome people anointed servants anointed men and women servants in the Lord hallelujah Amen. I salute the head pastor who is not here is engaged somewhere and uh, Mama Dokas and I salute the elders of the church you are doing an awesome work hallelujah Amen. want to salute you know all the leaders of the various departments and I want to salute all the heads of all the families Amen. and I also want to salute all the people seated here this afternoon in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah amen. Amen. amen anytime that we are seated in the in the house or in the presence of the lord god does something unique in our lives and i believe that this afternoon too we are going to be blessed by god in jesus mighty name amen it is kind of a difficult subject that uh, the Lord has laid upon my heart to share with the body of Christ to share with you know yourselves this afternoon but I'm believing that God will open the eyes of our understanding to be able to understand and to comprehend and know what it is that God wants to let you know in times like this it is very, very uh, important. You know, this thing has been on my heart for quite some time. And I'm trusting that God will begin to open your eyes as to what he wants you to do as his son. What he wants you to be doing in these very times, in these very last days, in these very uh, times that God has given unto us as a great privilege for us to be living in these are not just any ordinary times these are not just any ordinary days these gatherings are not just any ordinary gatherings these meetings that we have are not just any ordinary meetings so please if you are here and you've got it at the back of your mind that oh it's going to be you know another normal service or another normal sunday sermon or whatever thing i would like you to begin to have a new perspective about this Amen. hallelujah Amen. because we have got access to the great things that god purposed for generations even in the past and for our generation as well there is something unique which we all have got access to because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. As a matter of fact, we have access to his glory. We have access to his presence. We have access to the goodness and the blessings and the, and, and the great things in the Lord himself. So, we are not peculiar. We are not, you know, we are not just any ordinary people. We are a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation. The Bible says that we are a, pro, a royal priesthood. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When you begin to study the scriptures, you come to the understanding and the realization that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, living in these very days and times, are more than privileged. As a matter of fact, the people that have gone ahead of us, they actually desired to see what we are seeing and they desire to know what we know now and they desire they desired to experience what we are experiencing and to have this access which we have in him hallelujah Amen. i'm believing and trusting god that god will speak unto us this afternoon our eyes will be enlightened as Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so that you will know what it is that is his calling for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know the title yet, 
but I, I believe and I'm trusting that as we go on it will become evident what it is that God wants you to know this afternoon I'd like us to quickly turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 28 we've talked about this you know in the past before and any time that we go back to the book of beginnings we can understand or we can know certain things that God uh, has planned for us to have a deeper revelation and understanding of because we when we go back to the books of beginning that is where everything began so we have to have a, a very good perspective as to how God purposed things and how he began things and how God has ordained things to be hallelujah amen, amen. amen. Genesis chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 11 remember the last time we talked about you know Jacob and Esau story hallelujah amen, amen. God help us Genesis chapter 28 from verse 11 to 16 and I read so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the Sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac and the land the land on which you lie I will give you and your descendants also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth you shall spread abroad to the west and the east and to the north and the south and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed behold I am with you and will keep you wherever that you go and you will bring and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you verse 16 then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place and this is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven then Jacob awoke from his sleep verse 16 and said surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven hallelujah Amen. we all know what was happening to Jacob what he was experiencing as a matter of fact he had just been blessed by his father Isaac and his brother Esau was seeking to kill him so he was advised to go uh, uh, to Laban his mother's brother and the Bible says that whilst on his way to Laban night fell and as do we all do whenever that you know night comes we go to sleep but the place that he was sleeping was not in a comfortable place the Bible says that he took stones in that place and the name of the place that he was going to lie was loose and the Bible says that when he took the stones he laid his head on one of them and within a matter of few hours or you know some few minutes after that he dreamt and when he dreamt he saw a ladder descending from heaven just to where he was laying and the Bible says that he saw angels ascending and descending on that particular ladder and when 
he came back to himself. The Bible declares he made a profound statement and said that surely the Lord has been in this place and I did not know of it. For this place is no other, none other than the house of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that through that particular dream, God reaffirmed the promise that he gave unto Abraham, his granddad. He said that through you or through your lineage, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And he said that your, your, your descendants are going to be like the sand on the seashore. And then he also said that when you go to the west, when you stretch yourself to the east and to the north and to the south, that shall be your possession. You are going to be blessed beyond a curse. He reaffirmed that particular promise that he gave unto Abraham. But yet still, when he came back to himself, after that he woke from the dream, he made that profound statement. Ah, the Lord God has been here. For this place is none other than the house of the Lord. He said that, hey, this place is called Luz, originally, but I am going to call it Bethel, the house of the Lord. Sometimes we come to places and we come to places like this. We come to an assembly like this. We come to gatherings like this. We come to, you know, where the body of God or the body of Christ have gathered like this. And sometimes we come with some doubts. We come with some burdens. We come with, 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 with some ideologies and perspectives. And we come not knowing that the Lord is available at the place that we are gathering. The Lord's presence is available. The Lord's presence is available all the time whenever the, we gather in his house. When he slept on that stone, if it were some of us, probably we would have dreamt about, you know, different things altogether. We would have dreamt about people chasing us. We would have dreamt about, you know, uh, we would have had some, some, some very bad dreams and all that. But the Bible declares that for Jacob, when he laid his head on that particular stone, he dreamt and he saw heaven open. He saw the ladder descending from heaven. And he saw angels ascending and descending. What am I saying to somebody this afternoon? Any time that we stand together, any time that we come before him, wherever that we are, because we are covenanted sons and daughters of God, because we are connected to him, because Jesus is the Lord of our heart, and Jesus is the Lord of our lives, and because of the fact that we are connected to him, any where that we stand, wherever that we stand, be it Ghana or Afghanistan or United Kingdom or whatever city, wherever that we stand, we still have access to the glory of the Most High God. It might be that we are running from people. Jacob was running from uh, a predicament. He was running away from his brother. But the Bible declares that when he laid his head down, he did not expect God to show forth himself. But because he was a covenanted son, and he was a covenanted son of the Most High God, heaven opened up. And his eyes saw something that he had never witnessed in his life before. The Bible declares that he said, this is surely the house of the Lord. For the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I did not have a clue. I, did not, I don't have a clue as to the fact that the presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The whole earth contains the glory of the Lord. And when we say the whole earth, we are talking about the whole earth. 
Even the entire universe, the stars, the sun, all the planets, the ones that they are yet to discover. Everywhere that you go, you will see the presence and the glory of the Lord in those places. So for us as Christians, wherever that we stand, wherever that we go, in the place that we, 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 we are, in the gathering of the saints of God, we have access to the glory of the Most High God. Hallelujah. But sometimes, just as Jacob did not have a clue, and he did not know about it until it was revealed, sometimes all that we need is that we speak to the Lord and we pray that, Father, open the eyes of our understanding. Open our eyes to be able to understand all of these things that you are saying. The Bible declares that, you remember that uh, Philip was sent by God to go and meet the, it's this Ethiopian eunuch. And even though that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading the scriptures, he had actually uh, uh, come from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to worship. The Bible says that he did not have understanding of the scriptures until Philip was sent by God to expose unto him the mysteries behind what he was actually reading sometimes we don't have a clue sometimes we don't have a fuller understanding of things sometimes we don't know that god is closer than the clothing that we are even wearing sometimes if we have the faintest idea as to the things that we have got access to our whole perspective of life will change our whole understanding of how this whole thing is being done will change completely. But what we need to do is that we need to begin to seek to know the very depths in him. James 4 and verse 8 says that, Draw near unto God and he will do what? He will draw near unto you. Please listen to it. Draw near unto me. And I will draw near unto you. So who draws near first? We have to draw near to God. And then God will do what? Will draw near unto us. We need to begin to seek him the more. We need to begin to search for him. We need to begin to search the scriptures. We need to begin to desire to know him. And to experience the fullness in him. Hallelujah. During that night that Jacob laid his head upon that stone, he was alone. He was running. Life was not very pleasant to him at that time. As a matter of a later on, he said that with this staff only I crossed over the Jordan. With this staff, he went with no possessions at all. But yet, when he met God, God pronounced or affirmed the promises that he gave unto Abraham, to him. That you are going to surely be a blessing. And out of you, all your descendants are going to be blessed. And out of you, all the nations of this very earth shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes in life, it is not about what you have. It is not about your bank account. It is not about your possessions. What matters most is the revelation that you know. It's what you know and what it is that God is exposing to you. What it is that God is commissioning you to know. What it is that God has announced about yourself. So if you are seated here this morning full of rejection and dejection full of stress of this very life full of anxiety full of the fact that you you don't you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel i'm here to announce to you that even in this chaos your eyes can open to see the ladder coming from heaven and angels descending and ascending on it hallelujah Amen. what is it that you see when you sleep at night what is it that you have within you when you walk through the day 
You need to begin to see the glory of our king. You need to begin to see the glory of his majesty. Because out of that, you will see that God is present, very much more present than you ever think. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us please open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 32. Just to reaffirm the kind of attitude that we need to have in order to see the glory of the Lord. For most of us, all that we need is that we need to see the glory of our King. Hallelujah. Amen. And that will make all the difference. Anytime that we see the glory of the Lord, when we see the glory of the King, when we come in contact with his presence, when we see his awesome hand at work in our lives, that will make all the difference. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But what we need to realize is that we have got access to that level in Christ. We have got access to that level of glory in him. We have got access to him. It depends on how, you know, you, 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 you behave and, you know, your attitude and the passion that you have and the desire. If you seek him, you shall find him. Draw near unto him and God says that he will draw near unto you. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read from verse 24. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome scripture and awesome encounter that Jacob had. And these encounters, we also from time to time will have similar occurrences and similar uh, encounters. Always there is an opportunity for us to hold on to God and begin to possess and draw what it is in him. The Bible says that Jacob, the night before he was going to meet his brother Esau, had an encounter with God himself. The Bible talks about the fact that he wrestled with a man. And that was, you know, one of the epiphany appearances of Jesus Christ. Even before he was made manifest in, uh, as we know it, in the New Testament. And the Bible says that when Jacob was lay laying there, you know, alone, during that particular night, out of the blue, a man appeared. I don't know whether it was a spiritual thing, but I believe that it was, you know, a physical encounter that he had. And when he had that particular opportunity, within was fear because he was going to meet his brother Esau. And without was also fear. He was very, very sorely afraid. But when the chance came for him to wrestle with God, boy, he did well. The Bible says that he held on to God and wrestled with him throughout the night. And this wrestling, it, you know, we know how wrestling works. It's not just, you know, boxing that. You, wrestling is when you've actually held on to somebody. And then you said, I'm not letting you go until I, I put you down. In that realm, of the, uh, in that physical realm, man have got power and dominion in this very realm. And the Bible says that throughout the night, Jacob did what? Wrestled with him. 
And whilst day was breaking, he said, the man, Jesus himself, or God himself said, that let me go. And Jacob did what? Said that I am not going to let you go until you bless me. Until I have whatever thing that you have got to give, I'm not going to let you go. I wouldn't let you leave until something significant has been done to me and in my life. And like I'm saying, most of us will come to points like this. Most of us will have encounters like this in our Christian life. Opportunities are always being given. God has always been coming down you know in through the ladder that came down and then sometimes he comes physically in our meetings the opportunity will be given but it depends on your attitude jacob could have wrestled for just five minutes and said oh uh, let me let, let him go sometimes we don't hold on to jesus with the intention that we are not going to let you go until you bless me until I see the fullness of your glory. Until I see the fullness of your majesty. Until I see the fullness of your, of your goodness and your kindness towards me. I'm not letting you go. So he wrestled with the man. Until the point that it became very tough for that particular man, God himself. And the Bible says that he hit his hip. And his hip was out of shape. Sometimes, all that we need to do is to push through the pain barrier. We need to be willing and prepared to do what? Try our utmost. Do something beyond the ordinary. And then we are going to see his glory. It's not as if his glory is not there. The glory of the Lord is available. His glory fills the whole earth. His glory is always available. But all that we need to do is to do what? Is to seek after him. Is to search. Is to wrestle. Until even the point that the joint will be out of place. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He wrestled with this man and the man asked him about his name he said Jacob and he said that no that is the wrong name that was given to you Jacob means Trista you know people are being uh, castigating and saying all manner of things against him because uh, of that name that he was carrying the Bible says that the man said okay you have requested for it you have prevailed and because you have prevailed, now you qualify for that particular blessing. And he changed his name to Israel. Israel means the prince of God. And he said something unique about Jacob. He said that, for you have prevailed with God. And then you have prevailed with man. And you have been successful. Amen. Who are you prevailing with? Jacob started struggling. He started wrestling right from the womb. He wrestled with his brother Esau. He wrestled with Laban, his mother's brother. And he wrestled also with God. And God now con confirms or affirms. And he said that, For as a prince, you have struggled with men, and you have struggled with God, and you have prevailed. What am I saying? All that I'm saying is that for us to see the glory of the Most High God, for us to experience the fullness of him. For us to see the great and mighty things. For us to begin to walk in the spirit of God. And to begin to uh, uh, do signs and wonders. And begin to access the fullness of the blessing. Sometimes it requires effort. It requires us sleeping on the stone it requires us that when we get moments like what Jacob had we will wrestle with God until we see his glory Hallelujah. the Bible declares a time came 
in the life of Elijah and Elisha. When Elijah was told by God that it is not time for you to come home because you have served me faithfully. The Bible says that for a very long time Elisha was following steadfastly his master. He was determined to receive the double portion of power and the mantle that was upon Elijah. And the Bible says that even though that the sons of the prophets were sort of mocking him and they were making fun of him that are you aware that your master is going to be taken today and even though that all of those mockings did not move him Elijah himself tried to do what to sort of discourage him and said to him that oh can you remain here and let me embark on my journey and come back but consistently and repeatedly Elisha was determined to follow him until the mantle fell upon him. Sometimes we need that kind of desperate attitude. We need that kind of strong desire. All those who seek the Lord shall find him. The Bible says that seek the Lord once he may be found. Any time that you from within a sincere heart you seek the Lord, he will show himself strong to you. I came to say unto you, the glory of the Lord is available. The glory of our King is available. The Bible says that when Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem, the triumphant hero entry, he said that the people took palm branches and said that behold your king behold your king behold your king the king of glory has already been highly exalted he's already been elevated he's already you know available to us but it depends on our attitude if we want to know him he will reveal himself mightily to us hallelujah Amen. so the bible says that Elisha at some point was determined to see or receive the mantle that was upon Elijah. And Elijah asked him, what is this that you want me to do for you? And what did Elijah, Elijah say? It, it, when Elisha said that I want a double portion of your anointing, he said that, hey, you have asked what? A very difficult thing. You have asked a very difficult thing. But yet, if you see me go, if you see me exalted, if you see me being taken, if you can only see that moment, then whatever thing that you have asked, even though that it is a very difficult thing that you've asked, you are going to do what? You are going to receive it. A few moments after that, the chariots of fire came from heaven to take Elijah home. When he saw that this was happening, Elisha now lifted up his voice, saw it, and cried out and said, Oh, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. The Bible declares that when he said that, he made that comment, Master, the mantle fell upon him. I'm here to say unto you that there are certain mantles that are still available even in our days. I'm here to say unto you that there are certain anointings that are still available to us. The glory of the Lord wasn't only supposed to be on people like Elijah and Elisha and Jeremiah and Isaiah and you know the apostles and the prophets and Moses in our times too if we are willing we can also have access to this same glory we have access to even a greater covenant we have access to Jesus Christ himself amen. hallelujah amen, amen. amen. hallelujah amen. we've got access to this same glory this same mantle I'd like us to look at a scripture in John chapter 14 and verse 12. 
John chapter 14 and verse 12. I hope that God will open your eyes to have a revelation, you know, based on the word that he wants us to hear this morning. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Now we there. Hallelujah. And verse 12. The Bible says that most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Greater works than these he will do because of what? Because I go to the Father. When Elijah was being taken, all that he told Elisha was that if you see me go, if you see me go, if you see my elevation, if you see me being taken from this very realm to a new realm, then you are going to receive the double portion. You are going to receive my mantle. And Jesus centuries later said that if you see me go to the father I will do what? You will do greater works. What greater works was he talking about? What he did. What Jesus did. Jesus walked on water. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus opened the blind eyes. Jesus cleansed the lepers. Jesus preached the gospel. Jesus did so many things. For us, as modern day Christians, I don't know what motivates us. I don't know what it is that you are seeking for. Sometimes, we only seek for material things. We have become need-oriented Christians. All that we are interested in is that God give me grace to buy a new house. God give me grace to buy a new car. God give me grace to buy new clothing. But yet still, there is a higher calling of God for our lives and upon us. God has got ministries upon us. God has got ministries that he wants us to fulfill. Oh, I said on Friday that there are ministerial, ministerial gifts like uh, songwriters amongst us. There are prophets of God amongst us. There are healers. There are teachers. There are strange anointings that are available to us. But are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to sacrifice ourselves like Jacob did? Are we willing to sacrifice ourselves like Elisha did? Are we willing to see our God exalted? Jesus said that if you believe in me because I go to the Father, greater works than these you are going to do. I'm here to say to you that if you keep on believing and you keep on doing what God wants you to do and you keep on seeking after him and you keep on searching for him then you are going to see greater things you are going to see greater moves of God through your life I came to say unto somebody that keep on the good work that you are doing keep on begin to deny yourself and seek for the glory of the king begin to seek for his mother uh, his, his glory begin to seek the bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you yeah. what is the most important thing is that you seek for the lord seek the lord all the other things that you are chasing after will come running after you yeah. when you have god who is the creator for creator of all these other things when you have him then all other things will just follow you yeah. what we are doing is that we are chasing after things and then later on we come and seek god it will be too late yeah. when we seek the lord wholeheartedly when we seek him when we have that those divine encounters with him and you know my message this afternoon is to you, you bring, draw your attention to the fact that there are moments there are opportunities that we have by the day 
to see the glory of God. To access his glory. To see his power being made manifest in our lives and through us. There are always moments like this. But we are not willing to pay the price. Sometimes God will be sitting on, uh, uh, you know, he'll be seated on his throne. And then he will be saying that, oh, I wish that these men had a deeper understanding of what it is that I want them to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at uh, a scripture from Hebrews. Hebrews. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22 to 24. Are we there? Yes. Amen. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel hallelujah you have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God. You have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels. You have come to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, to God, the judge of all, the spirits of righteous men being made perfect. Jesus, you have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. You have come to the sprinkled blood which speaks better things than the blood of Abel. What is it that the writer of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, was alluding to? Some of these things are very deep. And I hope that God will help us to understand them. We have come not to people from Ghana. We have not come to people from East Togo. We've not come to men and women. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. These gatherings that we come to are not ordinary gatherings. We have come not only to the people that we see in this room. There are innumerable company of angels in our gatherings. Amen. When we gather, it is not only us. We have got some invisible beings also in our gatherings. Amen. We have come to the myriad of angels, company of angels. We have come to the church of the firstborn. All of these things Time will fill me for me to explain, you know, all of these groups that the writer of Hebrews actually makes mention of. We have come to Mount Zion. In those days, uh, God appeared physically to the people, you know, in Mount Sinai. And God will appear uh, with fire and then, you know, with tenders. And when he spoke, it was like, as if it, uh, it was like uh, very loud trumpets speaking and the people trembled but even though that it was very scary the people were were were, were always scared to go and hear what god wanted to say unto them so usually they would they would just task moses to go and do what and go and and hear whatever thing that god wants to communicate to them but the bible now says that we are now Come to Mount Zion. Zion is the city of God. 
Zion is the church. We have come to, you know, the, 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 the Mount Zion. We've come to a better covenant. We have come to uh, the, the innumerable gathering of angels. We have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come one, 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 one group says that we have come to the spirits of righteous men being made perfect. Amen. All the people of old, the Daniels, the Shadrach, the Meshach, Abednego, the Esthers, the Jacobs, the Isaiahs, uh, the Davids, all of them, the Deborahs, the roofs, all of them are part of our gathering. When we gather this uh, like this, like in our gathering, it is not an ordinary gathering. When we come together, we come to Mount Zion, God Himself. We come to the New Jerusalem. We come. We are part of the citizenship of heaven. We are not just UK citizens or British citizens. We are not only people from Nigeria, Ghana, Jamaica, uh, Congo, Zaire, and whatever, what, what have you. When we gather, we gather with the innumerable company of angels. All of this glory all of this power all of these celestial beings all of these souls of the just men that lead the likes of brother Amwaku John Wesley's the Charles Finney's the uh, all the people that you know of that died as Christians when we gather all of them come a minister unto us. Amen. It is not a mere gathering. We have access to divinity. We have access to majesty. We have access to glorious power. We have access to the glory of the Most High God. I hope that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened to know that you are not an ordinary son or daughter of the Most High God. The Bible declares that Paul said that if we died with him, we all, he also raised us with him. And then we are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. We are seated in heavenly places. Even though that we walk on this very earth, even though that we gather on this very earth, we are seated with him in heavenly places. It is a privilege that Jesus has given unto us. Why? Because Jesus came to die a shameful death on the cross. And then he reconciled all mankind to himself. So that we will have access to all this goodness. To all these blessings. To all this glory. To all the power. To all the anointings that are available. The glory of the Lord is hidden for some people because we are not pushing through the pain barrier to see his glory being made manifest in our lives. I came to assure you and to let you know that there is a death in Christ. There is a death in him. When you get there, you will begin to have a deeper understanding and a deeper revelation of all the things that you have access to. The person that is sitting next to you is not an ordinary person sitting next to you. You may know his name, but when that person meets God himself, his name will be transformed. Just as Jacob's name was changed, his name will be changed. And I came to announce to you that we have access to certain anointings that probably we are not aware of. If only you are willing and you are that desperate enough, if only you want to seek for that glory and that anointing, you will receive it. Amen. Mantles are available to us. 
Mantles are falling. Amen. Divine power is available. The, the power to raise up dead people. The power to open the blind eyes. Hallelujah. The power to affect our generation. The power to be at the top and not under. The power to set our feet on the solid rock is available. Amen. The power to raise the dead is available. Amen. The glory of the Lord to make you somebody in this life. To make you a renowned uh, singer and renowned musician. A renowned prophet of God. A renowned man or woman of God. A renowned minister of his gospel. That power is available to you. We have not come to Mount Sinai. We have come to Mount Zion. To the innumerable company of angels. To the holy Jerusalem. We have come to the spirits of just men made perfect. We have come to the judge of all, God. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of that new covenant. We have come to the blood that was sprinkled, which speaks better things than the blood of Abel. There is power that is available. There is an anointing that is available. If you are desperate enough to push through, you will see the hand of God. If you are desperate enough, we all see you as a nobody today. But tomorrow, we will see a new mantle coming upon your life. As the mantle fell upon Elisha, and he was able to do twice the miracles that Elijah did, there is a mantle that is available. If you are desperate enough, and you want to seek for that mantle, you will see yourself operating that particular mantle. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a power of God. There is a death in God. There is a place that God is calling us to. There are heights that we need to get to. There are levels that we need to get to. Sometimes we look at the prevailing situation and the circumstances and we say that it cannot be. It is not possible. I don't have the strength to do this. Beloved, I'm talking about mantles. Spiritual authority. It is not going to be any ordinary strength that you have. Or the knowledge that you know, you think you know. It would not be enough. What you need is the glory of the Most High God coming upon your life. What you need is the power of the Most High God coming upon your life. What you need is the new anointing of the Most High God coming upon your life. Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet?